Here are where God is going to take us as a faith community to live this out. But I just know that I'm looking and praying and, 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 and listening for the people that are ready to go. For the people that are ready to identify those that need the love of Jesus Christ. Children in Darfur, do they need justice? What do you think? Yes. People in Nigeria? Yes. People that have been flooded out of their homes or in Joplin, tornadoed out of their homes, do they need love? And, and, and are they the hungry and the thirsty and the people in need? Yes? yes. But see, who else? As I've talked to people through the week and even after the 8 o'clock celebration, this is not simple in the sense that we can just go, oh, okay, that's how we do it. Because there are people around us who are suffering, who are hungry, who are thirsty, who are in need. And I believe that what God is asking for is more than just writing a check and handing it off. Yes? yes. I don't know what form it's going to take, but I know that God is calling us to do something more. Who are the, who are the hungry and the thirsty and the oppressed and the hurting in Dubuque County? Are there hungry children in Dubuque? Are there? Yes. You think? Yes. What are we doing about it? Are there abused people in Dubuque? Women? Children? Men? Are there people in this town who are abused, beaten up, and left in the ditch? Are there? Yes. What are we doing about it? Anything? Are we even praying about it? What about other addicts? Are there addicts in this community? Are there people, I mean, fill in your addiction. Are there single parents in this community? Are there unwed mothers? Are there families of soldiers who are serving in faraway places? Are there, are there mentally ill? Are there lonely? Do you see where I can keep going? What are we doing about it? Because the gospel of Jesus Christ says you need to do something. We can't do everything. And that's the challenge. Is that God calls us into the vineyard. And God says the harvest is heavy. The laborers are few. But church, I'm saying, we need to pray together to figure out where God, where God wants to move us in the coming weeks and months to do something besides just serve ourselves. Yes? Yes. Do I seem fired up about this? Yes. Some of you may aren't even listening anymore. All right. I'm going to keep going because there's at least 10 of you that are with me, yeah? Yeah. I don't know where God's going to take us, but I do know for sure that God has spoken to us about doing justice and loving mercy and walking humbly and doing something for others besides ourselves. See, if we were a cruise ship, we wouldn't have to worry about this. If God called Grandview United Methodist Church to be a cruise ship, we'd be hanging out waiting to be served, right? Maybe get a massage. We doing massages there yet? No? Maybe wait to go swimming and to go have fun. But see, the deal is, church, we're not a cruise ship. We're a hospital ship. Hospital ships move. And they go. And they do healing. And they do help. And they try to alleviate suffering. We got music with that, Waylon? They try to alleviate suffering. No music? There it is. Got it. Not stationary. Not a cruise ship. Not just sitting around waiting for somebody to serve. I said to you last week, that's why my new policy is I'm not begging anybody to serve the children of this church. I shouldn't have to beg for that. You should want to. You should want to take the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. How much do you have to hate someone to withhold from them information that will transform their life? How much apathy, how much anger, how selfish do we have to be to not step up and give a cup of water or food or clothes or a prayer or a hug or a handshake or to teach a life lesson? How apathetic, how selfish, self-centered do we have to be to say no. God, God has given us the answers to the final exam. And again, I repeat, I don't know where God's going to take us. But I am absolutely, positively looking for people who are ready to get in line and go. And maybe that's you. Let's pray about it right now. Lord God, we confess to you that where you call us to go is scary.
It seems too big, too overwhelming. We don't know where to start, Lord God. We don't even know where to begin. How do we live out your teachings? How do we live it out, Lord? I pray, Lord God, that this moment in time right now is, is not the final word, but it's the first word. I pray that it's the beginning. Lord, let it begin with five of us, ten of us, maybe fifty of us. Let it start something new. But most importantly, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, let it be, let it be of you. I pray that you lead us and guide us and show us the right direction. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity and the possibilities. And I pray that you'll forgive us when we get distracted in, 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 in playing church. When we get distracted and going through the motions, forgive us for that, Lord God. And raise us up and empower us to be the men and the women and the youth that you dream of. I know you've heard this prayer, Lord. And I pray that you help us to truly be prepared for when you answer. Help us to be prepared and to not shrink away in fear. Thank you, Lord God, for listening to this prayer and listening to the prayers of the hearts and the heads of the people. Lord, I know you're at work here. I know you've been at work at people in this house today. Thank you. We give you this prayer. We give you the prayer that Jesus told us to pray. Say it together.